I've decided to transform the Cherry Blossom biome into a massive village that will put every other pathetic village to shame. Oh. To do that though, we need to find a spot to build it. Okay, this looks perfect. Like all good cities, the first step to building them is tearing down every tree in sight. Ah. Much better. All right, so I've set up this little base in the valley and now it's time to get building. So I made this sketch of what I want the village to look like. I think I want to start with this building in the back first. I'll be turning it into a smelting and processing building to help get the others built. The first thing we need to do is map out where the foundation's going to be. I'm gonna use a mix of stone and andesite for the foundations and the roadways inside the village. Okay, so now that the foundation is done, it's time to start building. I haven't really figured out how I'm gonna build this yet, but I found this picture on Google I liked, and I'm gonna try and build it. All right, so I like how the base is going so far, but it's a bit too much wood. I think I'd like to replace these pillars with something. Mm, ooh, yeah, I think I like that a bit better. I'm gonna replace all of them around with that. All right, so this is our start, and now we gotta figure out where to go from here. I began using some of the spruce wood I had collected earlier to build up the frame of the interior. Oi. Something I've noticed a lot with Japanese buildings is that they have these little supports and random designs on the outside. So I started playing around with some trapdoors and stairs, see if I could recreate some of them. I was getting bored of my block palette, so I decided to smelt down some terracotta and used its glazed versions. I've never built with these before, so this is either going to look awful or super cool. Alright, now we have the first layer done, and this is super important. You see, something I've noticed with the architecture is that these buildings are the exact same thing stacked on top of each other. All I have to do is repeat it up and up until until I get to my desired height. Big brains. All right, so at this point, we should probably put a roof on this thing. To recreate the roof from the picture, we'll need to mess around with some designs first. Nope, nope, nope. Ooh, nope. I like this one. It has a nice woo to it. This was probably the trickiest part of the build. I kept breaking and retrying things, but I finally found something I was somewhat satisfied with. All right, now that layer one is finished, time to repeat it all the way to the top. I wasn't sure how tall I wanted it, so I just kept going till I got carpal tunnel. Okay, well, aside from the emotional pain of sitting here for six hours placing blocks, I like some pizza. I'd say I'm in some pretty good shape. So now that the exterior is done, let's get the interior finished as well. And that's it. The smelting and processing building is done. Huh. It looks so lonely. All right, so the next thing I want to work on is the gate to get into the valley. Now, for those of you small brains who think there's an issue with having a mountain in between your front door and your house, you've clearly never heard of high-grade explosives before. But we'll worry about nuking the mountain later. For now, let's clear an area for the gate to be built. Oh! Oh! Hmm. <clears throat> That went well. Okay, so we'll start it at this corner, then over here. It's probably a wide enough. Yeah, that'll be wide enough. You know, I'm looking at it, and I feel like I want to make it bigger. Oh my goodness, this is taking forever. All right, so now we got some blackstone out. I want to accent it here. Yeah, probably the other side. Yeah, I like it. Now let's build it up a little. Okay, I want to try... Let's take out this middle column. I want to try putting either red terracotta or red concrete at the middle. Okay, yeah, that makes it stand out a lot more. So let's try the concrete. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. That's going to stand out a lot more when it's finished. Okay, so now we got to duplicate this design on the other side. Off my gate. Now, to do the roofs of either side of the gate, I've pulled up real schematics and images of Japanese gates, and I'm gonna try and copy a similar design to this one. Only, mine's not white, and not in a forest, and it doesn't have statues of dogs. All right, so it's taken shape. What are you doing down there? Get out of my gate. Ah, I don't like you. All right, now it's time to do the middle portion all the way up there. And now we finish the gate. Oh no. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. 
Oh. Oh. All right, now we just have to dig a giant hole right through the center of the mountain. I'm just kidding, we're gonna blow it up. But we're gonna need a few things to get that done. Hmm. No, oh, crap. Oh, there's a thing there. <laughs> oh, there's five hoglins. What is your problem? Okay, fine, we'll go mining for the debris. Well, that was painful. Now that we have our supplies, it's time to build our tunnel boards. You see, rather than mining a giant tunnel by hand like a peasant, these tunnel boards use TNT. It's launched onto ancient debris and explodes. The debris is immune to TNT and can be pushed by our flying machine to press forward as the TNT explodes. And now, <laughs> um, it uh, doesn't work. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Oh, I think it works. Aha! This is sick. This is gonna save so much time. All right, so to make this a bit quicker, I made two of them. I just did that for a transition. Um, play the next clip. All right, so now that we put a giant hole right through the middle of the mountain, Let's clean it up a little bit. And yeah, all right, that's better. This should make it a lot easier to work with and build inside. Okay, so I'm thinking we take this design, put it over there, here, and there. Then we'll put giant pillars in the middle. That'll hold up the cave. No idea if it'll look good, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, now that we have the template down, I think we need to go and get some green warped wood from the nether. We can fill that in as the backdrop. Oh, 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 that's that's lava. That's lava. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, okay, okay, let's try not to die. And now it's time to just grab a little bit of wood. Nothing feels better than some good old deforestation. All right, first we gotta clear out this little area behind here. All right, so now that we have the background filled out, I wanna fill it this green wood. I feel like it's either gonna look good or dreadful. Oi, what do you want? Oh, yeah, that's right, run boy. I mean, I kinda like it. I think I'll have to see the full thing with it, but two hours later. All right, so it's not looking too shabby. I'm thinking in every one of these slots, we can put a different Japanese word. But I have no idea what to write there yet. So for now, let's deal with the roof as it's, uh, <laughs> it's looking a little rough. My first thought is to put red concrete everywhere and maybe accent it with some black. No idea if that'll look good, but I'll go grab some. All right, to make this a bit easier, I've come up with a plan. If I make a trap door, then I place it in a nook like this, stand here, and right click it, it'll sink me to only one block tall. This way, I only have to mine out a one high space, and I just take out the floor. It'll save me a bit of time since I won't have to mine two layers at a time. Okay, okay, now that we got the banners going down each side, I wanna try like a spider pattern. I like it, it's very basic, but I think it'll work for the ceiling. I would just gotta copy it all the way to the end. Where are you getting this dirt from? Why are you bringing it into my tunnel? Get out! Oh, emerald. All right. Ow. So I capped off all the pillars, and I think they look a bit better now. I also added some detail to the ends of these. I think, I think if I double it, yeah, and then I'll rise it up. Hey, oh, hey, talking to the camera. I'm gonna double it and get it all the way to the ceiling and see what that looks like. Ooh, I like this. The alternating pattern. Okay, now I just gotta paste it onto everything. Uh, it's gonna take a while. And there she is. The tunnel is completed. You know, thinking about it, a tunnel should probably lead to something. As of right now, if you were to walk out the other side of this tunnel, you would fall to your immediate death. I should probably fix that. Some of this. Yeah, let's go this way a little, why not? I have no idea if each segment is even, but I'm just winging it. Okay, that looks bad. All right, so to try and save these stairs, I'm gonna fill in the sides. I took an inspiration for these builds from absolutely nowhere. I was completely winging it and had no idea if it would look good. And with that being said, I present you stairs. Hi, 
way. All right, now that we have a way into the valley, it's time to get back to building the village. The next building I want to construct is a huge library with tons of space for my enchanted books and my enchanting table. With a rough plan in mind, I started building. I'm, um, I'm out of blocks. Well, time to get some more. Okay, so the first block we need is andesite. Did you have a baby? Okay, first thing we need is andesite. All right, I need like 800 andesite, so this could take a while. All right, so that should be enough andesite. Um, how do I get out of here? I'm out. All right, so now we need like, um, 8,000 of these blocks. Yeah. Let's go! All right, that's probably enough. We just need a couple more things from base. Now we just have one more issue before we can start. You see, we need like 2,500 prismarine just for this build. And if I try and mine it like this... All right, this is working a lot better than I originally planned it working. Oh, then I might run into a bit of an issue. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh. We're good. Now, we could drain like 10 temples and mine them all manually, or we could build a slaughtering house and mercilessly kill thousands of guardians and harvest their scales to be made into blocks. Humanely, of course. First thing we need to do is kill the elder guardians. All right, that's one. Oh, hello. Number two. All right, and that was three. Now, to farm guardians efficiently, we're gonna have to use the nether. You see, the overworld caps the amount of mobs in a single area to 70. And since we want thousands of guardians spawning per minute, we need to get around that. The minute a mob enters the nether, however, the mob cap in the overworld resets. To actually pull this off, we need to make a max-sized nether portal at 23 blocks long. Then, using an easy block to mine, we construct a 21 by 17 area on either side of the platform. This will capture a majority of the spawn points the guardians regenerate from. Using fence gates and water, we create a stream that flows into the nether portal and add a small well around the edges. Lastly, to persuade the fish to swim into the nether portal and give their lives to serve as building blocks, we place soul sand all over the base of the temple. Soul sand creates bubble columns underwater and will force the guardians to swim up and then be pushed through the nether portal. Now, we just need to construct a humane way to extract the scales once the guardians go into the nether. And to do that, we're gonna burn them alive! All right, we build little circles around the portal like this, and it will enable the guardians to fall through it after I eat them through the other side. Some campfires for the guardians to fall onto. Then we place some hoppers like this to collect the drops. Then we surround the base like this so the guardians don't flop out. And now we commit genocide. All right, so I've sat here for a couple hours, and now it's time to see how much prismarine we got. Uh, okay, this might have been a bad idea. Um, okay, well, it's the only way we can get through, so. No, no, okay, redo, redo, redo. Take two, everything's fine. Things are not fine. They've escaped. Oh, no. Um, 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 um. A few ums later. All right, so we mainly just need the prismarine shards for now. Make them into bricks. All right, that should be enough bricks for the second building. Now we need to get back home. I'm using stairs and trap doors again around the edges because, well, they look cool. I'm gonna have the roof dip out a lot more from the frame than the last one. I don't want every building to be small and skinny, and I think this one's gonna look cooler anyway. Yeah, that's nice. Now let's finish it off. All right, so the outside of the library is done, but this looks kind of awful. It's just two random buildings sitting across from each other. So let's build a road to connect them. To make the path look worn in, I'm gonna place stairs here and there. The little air gaps they leave make it look like the road's been walked on a lot. Ooh, yeah, that actually looks a lot better. All right, now we gotta decorate the interior, only I have no idea what to do. It's like every build I've ever done. Probably something like this, maybe. Mm, maybe I could find a design from like actual. I kind of like the sliding door designs going. I wonder. I wonder if we could do something with slabs. All right, I'm thinking we do like a little privacy screen right here. I kind of like it. What if we alternated all slabs, and then we do one with stairs and slabs? Yeah, I like it. Let's do that all the way up. Hmm. I spent a bit of time on the walls trying to decorate them so they didn't look so plain. Since it's a library, let's place some bookshelves. Okay, now we need an area to enchant. I've always liked the idea of enchantment tables sort of sunk into the ground like a wine cellar. For all the OCD people, there you go. All right, and with that, the library is complete.
I wanted to test out some ideas, so I built smaller houses behind the library to fill in the area a little. This project has literally taken so long, and I still have the main mega structure to build and a bunch of others. To put this in perspective, I've managed to watch nearly every season of Naruto during this build. There are 27 seasons! But anyway, I want to fill in the other side of the valley with houses before we get to the main structure. However, we have a slight issue. I've, um, run out of cherry wood. Now, I could go hunting for another biome, deforest it and return home, but I think I'll take the more environmental route. We're gonna make an automatic tree farm. That bit just took like 30 minutes to film. Hmm. Apparently there are none for 1.20 yet. I wonder what would happen if we built one that was designed for oak trees and then just planted cherry blossom saplings. Nah. Works like a charm. With the resources gathered, I started on the new section of the village. Okay, so I think it's best if this time we put pathways first before we make the buildings. This way everything connects a lot nicer. With the pathways finished, I began framing where we were gonna put down the new houses. <gasps> Is that a donkey? Donkey! Hi! You wanna come back with me? I have a house for you. No. Oh. Screw you too! Nah, hey, I'll show you. I'll build you a house that you'll be begging me to live in. No, I'm not sure why a donkey gave me this much motivation, but for the next six hours I said absolutely nothing and just built. All of the smaller buildings follow a similar pattern and style to the larger ones. I would have liked to create more variety, but I had spent over a hundred hours already on designing and building these things, so I just didn't have the time. Alright, the left side is complete, and with that I present you the village nearly complete. What's left is the mega structure in the center of the village and some smaller ones around. <laughs> oh boy. Let's start with the small ones first. My original drawing showed buildings on the mountainside, so I picked a spot to overlook the city and began building. I wanted these structures to be tall enough so they'd be seen from the village, so I spent a little longer than I should have. You know, even though that took nine hours, I'm glad we put those there. Now I just need to curl up in a ball and die. But now we gotta focus on the main building of the village. I want two things to be part of this build. First, it has to be way bigger and cooler than the others. And second, I want a dragon, like, on, on the building. Hugging it. I want to put it smack dab in the middle. Only there's a couple things in the way. Uh, it should be a big enough area to do it. Now let's figure out where the foundation's gonna be. Oh, right, so that's about how big I wanna make it. And then it's gonna go way up there. When I started this project, I had no idea how crazy it would be to actually build. I spent countless hours mining, tree farming, drinking way too many energy drinks. And barely any of that made it into the video. But you know, as I spent the last 10 hours building the town hall, it felt like every hour I spent was somehow stored in one of the greatest builds I had ever done. 